The next type of muscle that we're going to discuss is the cardiac muscle. Now the cardiac muscle is the muscle that makes up the heart. And just like skeletal muscle is strided because it consists of these individual units we call sarcomeres, our cardiac muscle is also strided because it consists of sarcomeres. So if we take a look at the heart, the heart appears to be striped. It contains these striations shown in red. And that that's because if we zoom in onto an individual cardiac muscle cell, we contain these myofibrils that consist of sarcomeres. So basically, if we take uh, individual sarcomeres and we connect them end to end, we basically form something called a myofibril. And we have many of these cylindrically shaped myofibrils in any given cardiac muscle cell. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven myofibrils in this particular cardiac muscle cell. So the red portion of the cell is the plasma membrane of the cardiac muscle cell and that is known as the sarcolemma. And just like we have a sarcolemma with T tubules in the skeletal muscle, we also have the sarcolemma with the T tubules inside our cardiac muscle cell. So the T tubules are basically the deep invaginations, these deep tunnels that begin on the plasma membrane and extend throughout the cell. And they are basically responsible for uh, allowing the action potential to propagate quickly and uniformly throughout the entire cardiac muscle cell. Now we also have our green section and that is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That is the specialized type of endoplasmic reticulum inside the cardiac muscle cell that contains a high concentration of calcium that is needed for the proper muscle contraction. Now we also have a nucleus and that is shown in blue. But unlike in skeletal muscle that contains many nuclei per given cell, the cardiac muscle cell only contains a single nucleus. So this is the first important difference between cardiac muscle cells and skeletal muscle cells. Now the cytoplasm of our cardiac muscle cell is known as the sarcoplasm. So what, what about some other differences between cardiac muscle cells and skeletal muscle cells? So, so far we see many of the different structures that are found in skeletal muscles are also found in cardiac muscle cells. Now, the next important difference between our cardiac muscle cell and the skeletal muscle cell is the fact that cardiac muscle cells are actually connected to one another. So if we have one cardiac muscle cell, a second cardiac muscle cell will be found right next to it, and these two will be connected by regions called intercalated discs. Now, intercalated discs are basically these connecting regions that contain two important types of junctions. One of these junctions is known as a gap junction. And what the gap junction is, it's basically this channel that connects one cell to the adjacent cell. And this channel allows for a quick and uniform propagation of the action potential from one cell to the next cell because it allows the movement of ions between adjacent muscle cells. And this type of arrangement of cardiac muscle cells in the heart basically allows for a uniform and synchronized contraction of our heart. So if we take a look at the following diagram, this is cardiac muscle cell number one, cardiac muscle cell number two, this separating region that connects them is the intercalated discs. And it contains one type of junction known as a gap junction that allows for a rapid communication between cells. And it also contains a second type of intracellular junction known as the desmosome. And the desmosome is basically the intracellular cellular junction that actually glues the two cells together that holds the two cells together and allows them to stick together when we have that contraction actually taking place so this is the second important difference between cardiac muscle cells and skeletal muscle cells so basically we have our cardiac 
uh, muscle cells that only contain a single nucleus. They also contain these special connecting regions known as intercalated discs. Now, cardiac muscle cells also contain relatively large mitochondria, and that makes sense because the cardiac muscle cells are constantly working. They're constantly pumping that blood throughout the body, and so they need to continually make that ATP, and that's why they contain large mitochondria. Now, unlike skeletal muscle tissue, which is voluntary because it is controlled by the somatic nervous system, cardiac muscle cell is involuntary because it is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Now, although it is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, certain cardiac muscle cells actually exhibit something called myogenic activity. And myogenic activity simply means that certain cardiac muscle cells inside the heart can actually initiate a contraction without a stimulus from the nervous system and we'll talk more about that when we're going to discuss the cardiovascular system. Now the final concept that I'd like to briefly discuss in regards to our cardiac muscle cell is the action potential and what the action potential actually looks like compared to the action potential of our neuron. So basically this is what the graph of the cardiac muscles action potential looks like and notice that we have this long region known as the plateau phase that we actually don't find in the action potential of a neuron. So during the generation of an action potential inside a cardiac muscle cell we have this extended period of depolarization that is caused by the presence of voltage gated calcium channels inside the membrane of the cell. So the membrane of the cell doesn't only contain sodium and potassium voltage gated channels, it also contains calcium voltage gated channels. So let's see what happens. So our resting potential is about negative 90 millivolts and let's suppose we have some type of stimulus that reaches the threshold voltage of about negative 70 millivolts. So what happens next, our, our um, sodium voltage gated channels on the membrane are very quick to open and basically they allow for the rapid movement of the sodium ions inside the cell and that causes the inside of the cell to become positive and that leads to our depolarization period. Now when we reach about positive 30 millivolts the sodium voltage gated channels close while the potassium voltage gated channels begin to open but they open very slowly at first. At the same time we also open the calcium voltage gated channels and calcium voltage gated channels are very slow to actually close. So basically what happens is because we have this additional voltage gated channel and because the calcium ions go into the cell while the potassium goes out of the cell and because the potassium has a larger charge we see that the inner portion of the membrane stays positive for a longer period and that means we have a longer depolarization period than normal than what we would see on a neuron and this longer depolarization period is known as our plateau phase or plateau stage. So eventually the sodium channels be or the, uh, the calcium channels begin to close and our potassium channels begin to open quicker and eventually we have this repolarization period and then we return to our normal resting membrane potential of negative 90 millivolts. Now what exactly is the purpose, what is the function of this plateau phase? Why would we want a longer depolarization period? So basically what the longer depolarization period does is it increases the time of contraction and that allows all the adjacent uh, cardiac muscle cells to basically depolarize uniformly and quickly so that our heart basically contracts in a single and forceful steady contraction and that ultimately uh, allows the movement of the blood that carries the nutrients and the oxygen 
through the different parts of our body. So the reason we want the voltage gated uh, calcium channels to basically exist is to create this longer contraction to allow all the adjacent cardiac cells to depolarize uniformly to create this long and steady uniform forceful contraction of our heart. So if this did not exist, our cardiac muscle cells would basically contract very sporadically and that would not create a single forceful contraction. 